Good afternoon, and welcome to our candidate forum featuring the candidates from the Rancher Cordova City Council. My name is Kathleen Chauvin, and I'm a member of the League of, of Women Voters of Sacramento County. I will be your moderator for the forum today. I would like to welcome our candidates participating in today's forum. At my right is uh, candidate Robert McGarvey. At my immediate left is candidate Ken Cooley. And at my far left is candidate David Sander. I'd also like to thank and welcome our panelists for today who will be posing questions to the candidates. Uh, we have Chris Midoff from Grapevine Independent. We have Kim Nelder from the Sa California, Sacramento, California State University, Sacramento. And we have Eileen Heiser from the League of Women Voters. I wanna thank you and welcome you all for participating today. Today's forum is co-sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Sacramento County and the Sacramento Metropolitan Cable Television Commission. The forum is being viewed live by an audience in the Sacramento County Supervisors Chambers in downtown Sacramento and by a cable television audience at home. It's also being taped for later viewing on Metro Cable Channel 14. Before we get started, I'd like to t say a few words about the League of Women Voters. The League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan, nonprofit organization of men and women established to promote political responsibility through informed, active participation in government. The League does not endorse, support, or oppose individual candidates or political parties. And state and local leagues have been sponsoring debates such as this one at, at all levels of government since the League was founded in 1920. The format for today's program will include the opportunity for each candidate to make a brief opening statement, a brief closing statement, and to answer questions posed by our panelists. By a draw, Mr. Um, McGarvey got the first draw, so uh, Mr. McGarvey, would you like to make an opening statement? Yeah, thank you very much. My name is Robert J. McGarvey. I'm a member of the City Council of Rance Cordova. I'd like to thank the League of Women Voters of Sacramento for inviting me to participate in this forum. I was asked at the grocery store why I would participate in the candidates' forum since the only three people running are the three incumbents. The answer is simple. No one can or should ever assume that they do not have to keep in touch with the people, as many people as possible, that we know all the questions or all the answers. This forum gives me an opportunity to talk about our great city and perhaps answer some questions. It took many years when we first began as a member of the Joint Cordova Community Council and Chamber of Commerce. I began in 1978, my first begin, as uh, working toward incorporation. I chaired a committee for 17 years to get us on the ballot. It was worth it, but it took a lot longer than I thought it would. People in Rens Cordova know their local elected officials. It's always easy to talk to someone in the church, in the grocery store, and they know exactly where I live and who to talk to. And we have at-large elections. That is something that's very important, I think, to everybody in Ranch Cordova. Council members are elected by voters from throughout the city without regard to what area they live in. We be able to continue to operate our city in the black, and we have been able to save our historical Kilgore Cemetery. Many things to be done, and we're going to be working on them. Thank you. Mr. Cooley? <clears throat> well, I too want to thank the League of Women Voters for hosting this event today, giving us the opportunity to kind of be visible and talk about the city. Uh, my name is Ken Cooley, council member in the city of Rancho Cordova, elected with my colleagues in the first election six years ago. And at that election, I really supported cityhood, and I sort of ran on the, under the, the umbrella of bringing our future home. Our city's decisions for years were made in this room, remote from the city of Rancho Cordova. Cityhood represented a way to bring our decisions home to the community. And we're seeing improvement, we're seeing cleaner streets, 50% um, uh, sworn law enforcement officers, just a greater sense of community and focus on the community. But I, as I look to run for reelection, I've lived in Rancho Cordova for over 30 years with my wife, my sons live there. Uh, both my married son, my younger son, who's a, who's a youth pastor in the community. I, I think cityhood has been good. We have been really doing well as a city. The vote, vote of cityhood clearly was about bringing our future home. We've done that. 
but I still think it's about bringing our future home. I think as we grow as a, as a community, we have a challenge of making sure we are making decisions that kind of serve the interests of those who voted for cityhood. And I think that's the, our continuing challenge on the city council. So I'm delighted to serve. I'm, as with all my colleagues, we're former mayors, uh, looking forward to run and be subject to voter scrutiny. Thank you, Mr. Sanders. <clears throat> Well, thank you very much. Like my colleagues, I'd like to thank the League for offering this fine venue and, uh, and my colleagues for once again sitting here with me running in a relatively unopposed uh, election. It's, uh, it's a rare honor, but I think it speaks a little bit to what we've accomplished as a city. Uh, I was also on the original city council back in 2002, and this year we celebrated our fifth anniversary because we incorporated in actually July of 2003. We published a small booklet talking about the top 10 things we've accomplished in those five short years. In brief, they are, we've elected local leaders. So as Bob said, you can find us at the grocery store, you can find us at church. That's a benefit in, of incorporation. We've kept $375 million in Ranch Cordova that might have gone elsewhere had we not had a city. We've created a new and sustainable and one of the first LEED certified, that's an environmentally certified, city hall in Northern California. We fostered $1.4 billion in commercial development, including five major shopping centers being remodeled, four new communities, two new light rail stations, a cemetery rehabbed that Bob mentioned, and the historic uh, Folsom Boulevard uh, renovation project. We've managed to improve Ranch Cordova's image through our own actions as council members and just by creating a better image for, uh, for us in the community, in the region. We have a strong neighborhoods program that's rejuvenating our aging neighborhoods. We have a, a police department that is strengthened with 50% more sworn officers. And we've spent an enormous amount of money, $182 million, on streets and street sweeping and improving the sort of things, parks, streets, uh, handicap access, pedestrian access, that really improve the quality of life in the community. And I'd like to spend some more time this afternoon talking about this. Thank, Thank you. you. Ms. McDowell, would you... Uh, address a question to Mr. Cooley. I will, thank you. Mr. Cooley, upon incorporation, um, one of the council's stated goals was to improve the image of Rancho Cordova to the outside world. I'm wondering how far along you feel that we are in this goal and what else can be done to further improve the image? On improving the image, I think we have enjoyed a pretty stable council. We, we've had a pretty cohesive council fundamentally. I think there is a recognition within the region actually that uh, the city of Rancho Cordova has done a good job as a council kind of focusing on the future of the community. There's just so many hoops you have to jump through when you are a new city. And there's general plans to be put together, but we've been very energetic, reaching out to the community, kind of talking about the vision. David talks about Folsom Boulevard where we've done special outreach to kind of get people to talk about the future of, of our Folsom Boulevard, the original Highway 50. Um, so I think the collaborative nature of our city council, the careful focus on the future, we've put together an outstanding staff. I mean, our city manager, Ted Gabler, is internationally renowned. And we sort of joke, we go to, we go to civic meetings and he's sort of a rock star. People know Ted Gabler, people are almost in awe of Rancho Cordova having attracted an internationally renowned city manager. I think we are all active at various levels, both in the region, at the state level, through various bodies. Uh, I'm the incoming, or I'm now the second vice president of the League of California Cities, but my colleagues have been extremely active on the National League of Cities boards. So we, we have brought the face of Rancho Cordova as elected officials in our own county, in our own community, the state level, even nationally, and raised the visibility. And uh, I think we are getting high marks for that. Thank you. Mr. Sander? Well, my colleague is correct. We're not one of those city councils where you turn in Channel 14 or whatever channel it may be in your neighborhood to see your council members yelling at each other for sport. That's not us. We're a very collegial group. We get along. And as a result, we have a relatively high uh, performance rate. We have done things that other cities in the region have, have not been able to do. And I'm pretty proud of those things. Things like get a general plan done on time that a general plan is the, the plan for the future of the community. What do you want to be like in 20 years? It answers that question. And our plan was not only done on time, it was innovative, and it was innovative enough to win a, uh, a statewide award for best general plan. We're very proud of that because it sets a high standard for the future of our community. We're doing the same thing now with our zoning code. 
which will get to those quality of life issues that I think we originally became a city to address. We've encouraged infill development throughout the city and had a lot of success bringing new development to the city. We have done a, a project known as Capital Village that is quite innovative within the region, quite a success. It's townhomes, it's bringing young people and senior citizens together in a dense community that is unlike anything you'll probably find elsewhere in the, in the community. And we put that neighborhood, that residential development, right in the middle of the enormous job base that is in Ranch Cordova, the largest job base in the Sacramento region. So people can walk to work as opposed to drive to work. I'm very proud of that. All of these things work to raise our image. We have fostered great community events, something I'm pretty proud of, whether it be our Fourth of July event, our Haunted Hagen event. We do uh, spring events, Easter events. We celebrate our birthday. We celebrate everything in Ranch Cordova, and all of these things raise our image and, and make us a more positive uh, place to be in the region. Thank you. Mr. McGarvey? Well, I'm going to echo my other two colleagues. Um, I have a quote from the Sacramento Bee, and a year after cityhood, the Bee said, and I quote, council members seem to genuinely respect and like one another and are can comfortable enough to openly vent or chuckle given the moment. That continues today and concern for the city with all five of us is always first. People are concerned about the uh, low income housing, about the new housing, about how we're going to be able to handle this, if we're going to be able to keep it as uh, even something we all hear about is, is one city or not. Or all of us live in the city. That's one of the things about having a locally elected official. You live with everything you do. Every judgment you make, every decision you make, it is something that you live with. So everything that I do, I'm doing for my family. Uh, three of my four grandkids live in Rancho Cordova. Um, so it's something that's really important to me. Um, Mather uh, was, has been part of Ranch Cordova and still is part of Ranch Cordova. I was at the uh, kickoff, they say, for um, the uh, National uh, Aviation Battalion at Mather. Seventy California National Guard were uh, officially given their orders on October the 1st. They'll be going to um, Fort Sill for a month. Then they're going to Afghanistan for a year. Um, Thank they you. know that they have the support of Ranch Cordova. Thank you. Ms. Nelder, would you address a question to Mr. Sander? Sure. What are the biggest challenges that Rancho Cordova faces in terms of trying to develop a more flourishing downtown, and what solutions might you propose? Well, that's a very big question. Um, like many suburbs, particularly those that developed in the 50s and 60s, it's hard to find a downtown in Ranch Cordova. Uh, downtown is usually defined as Folsom Boulevard, and that is the crux of, of my approach to, uh, to what do we do about a downtown in Ranch Cordova. Folsom Boulevard was originally Highway 50. It has since become a main street for the city of Ranch Cordova. But unfortunately, when the new Highway 50 was built, no one ever went back to fix the old Highway 50. And so that, that's what we're left with as a main street, is that old Highway 50. It's auto uses. Um, you know, Some hotels, aren't, there aren't many left, but a lot of automotive-related uses, small parcels not, not devoted to main street-like activity. And so we've done a couple of things. We have a Folsom Boulevard-specific plan that addresses in great detail how to move us forward. But we've also done things like invest in infrastructure. We have, uh, we've gotten about $16 million in grants, federal and state, and much of that has been spent on Folsom Boulevard to beautify it, to improve the physical environment, and uh, to bring new business and new life to that avenue. Thank you. Mr. McGarvey? Well, having a downtown has been kind of an interesting, uh, sometimes difficult, but it's always a challenge. And that always brings up the best of us, I think. Um, we can definitely have a downtown, and that's one of the things that we're doing. We got another award for the time and the way we have developed the Capital Village. Uh, and David talked about that. We have new uh, uh, stores in there, uh, Lowe's and Chili's and other restaurants coming in. We have uh, um, a savings uh, loan association. We have all kinds of things going in there. We also have a new park with an amphitheater, and that's going to be something that's going to be a draw to the center of the uh, town. And we also have new homes in that area. So it's all in this one area that we're looking at right now. But we also have, and one of my goals has been and continues to be, to begin having a uh, 
shuttle uh, trolley going north and south for the residents in the uh, part of Brands Court where I live. Uh, I live about half a block from uh, American River Parkway. So, Thank you. Mr. Cooley? Okay. Um, <clears throat> on the issue of sort of how to improve the downtown, you know, that's a legacy issue. We start with what is in Rancho Cordova, which has been there for many, many decades. Uh, early on, we supported a program known as Weed and Seed, which, among other things, brought enhanced social services and law enforcement to key areas that will be sort of in our downtown. Uh, because I think we were not happy with the level of law enforcement in the community prior to cityhood. And really tackling our reputation uh, is very important, and our reputation on the light rail lines, which runs right through there. The issue of infill is very challenging because there are so many old properties, small parcels, uh, so much infrastructure in the ground that development needs to move and move around to kind of grow improvement. I'm personally working on issues of infill through the League of California Cities where I'm active. Uh, I chaired this past year the Housing Committee. I have certain issues I'm actually working on that I've actually discussed with Linda Adams, Environmental Secretary to Governor Schwarzenegger, Daryl Steinberg, New Senate Pro Tem, uh, Attorney General Bill Lockyer, others working on financing. Thank you. Okay. Um, Ms. Heiser, would you address a question to Mr. McGarvey? Yes, thank you. Rancho Cordova has a large number of uh, commuters who work there nine to five. What can be done to entice those commuters to move to Rancho Cordova? Well, I think the main problem you might say we have right now is the same problem that all the developers are having across the country. There isn't a market for homes right now. When we first started developing uh, Zimmendel Village, most of those homes are in. But they came just about to the point where Anatolia was coming in and then the market leveled out and kind of fell flat on its face. Most homes are not being built. Uh, we have set records across the country uh, on homes that are foreclosed. Um, so our goal is to work with the citizens and help them find the homes that they can be close to so they can ride a bike to work or walk to work, um, get the shuttle that I'm talking about. Uh, use that rather than having to have a, uh, a car. A lot of people won't walk a mile, mile and a half to get from where their home is to the center of the shopping, to the light rail. Um, so that's one of the things that we're working on right now. I want to have the ability to bring the people who live in El Dorado Hills, for instance, and they work in Ranch Cordova, they have to go a long way. They fight traffic. So I would much rather have them live here. Thank you. Here at Ranch Cordova. Thank you. Mr. Cooley? Well, I think the biggest thing to be done is just to kind of focus people on Rancho Cordova as it is. One of our advantages, frankly, as a city is there's a lot of old stereotypes of the community that no longer fit. Um, we talk often about our established areas of the city as Riverside Rancho Cordova because, you know, 98% of the homes north of Folsom Boulevard are within a mile to a river access on the American River Parkway. These are established neighborhoods where you can get trees in the yard, you'll have large lots, you're, you don't have traffic on your street unless people are coming on your street. So these are great places for families to start out. They, they can be older homes, but they actually have established yards, trees, and a proximity to the parkway, which is outstanding. The, the jobs-rich character of Rancho Cordova, we have three jobs for every household. So we already have six times the jobs in Rancho that, a full, or that an Elk Grove has. So people live there, and as gas prices climb, uh, it's a quality of life matter to be able to hop on your bike, ride to work, and ride home, and have time with your family. And that's in Rancho today. Thank you. Mr. Sander? Well, this is an issue close to my heart. It's one that I spend a great deal of time on. I represent the uh, City of Rancho Cordova on the Regional Transit Board of Directors, a board that I, I chaired a couple of years ago. And our team needs to do a better job of serving our giant job center in Rancho Cordova. Most people don't realize it, but there are essentially as many jobs in the Ranch Cordova corridor as there are in downtown Sacramento. But yet the vast majority of resources go into providing transit and transportation to downtown Sacramento, not to the jobs in Ranch Cordova, which leads to an enormous number of commuters trying to get in and out of Ranch Cordova every day. So we need to pursue more solutions with, with RT as well as the road projects that are proposed in our region. Uh, second, we need to make our neighborhoods, our existing neighborhoods, particularly our aging neighborhoods, 
more attractive to young home buyers. And that's why we established the Strong Neighborhoods Program, to clean up those neighborhoods, to make them attractive, to make them worthy of investment by, uh, by new individuals who want to call Ranch Cordova home and who already, hopefully, work in Ranch Cordova. Thank you. Ms. Mada, would you address a question to Mr. Cooley? Yes, thank you. Mr. Cooley, a large part of Rancho Cordova's population is transient, due in part to the large number of multifamily housing that we have and um, rental housing. I'm wondering if you see that as a problem, and also if you do, do you have any plans to help these kind of residents um, achieve the goal of home ownership? Well, I think transient uh, home situations are, you know, just that affects the kids that live in those homes. So, I mean, clearly that's a problem. I think uh, the benefit of home ownership, you have more established neighborhoods. Um, every study shows that kids of whatever their economic level, if they are growing up in a settled neighborhood, are going to do better sociologically, educationally. So, you definitely want to see improvement there. Um, that said, I think that. Um, uh, we can do things to help in a certain extent. I think there needs to be a respect for the communities that exist. I mean, we have very diverse ethnic communities that reside in some of our apartment complexes, and they have rich cultural lives. They're just not homeowners at this stage. I think we can look for ways to help. I, I think a byproduct of the foreclosure debacle and the collapse in home prices, this may over time lead to more home opportunities. Certainly that's one of the goals of the HUD program announced last Monday. Uh, and we will work to support that. Thank you. Mr. Sander? Well, Chris, I think you've hit on a, a central theme of our incorporation, and that was a frustration with the number of um, multifamily and rental units, even single-family homes that are rentals in Ranch Cordova. It's a legacy of having an Air Force base and having thousands of airmen there to be trained at Mather. But when Mather closed, the housing stayed, the airmen left. Um, that left us with a, an enormous number of, uh, of rental properties, both single family homes and apartments. Uh, it has a big impact. It has an impact on schools when families are moving regularly between schools. It has an impact on community stability. It has an impact on community organizations. It is a, it is a significant, serious problem and one that we've taken a hard look at. Our Strong Neighborhoods program certainly goes to address that and the key component of that is dealing with the absentee landlord, be they a multifamily project owner or a single family uh, homeowner um, that is not as invested as they should be in Ranch Cordova. We are raising the standards. New and higher standards are in place. We have rental inspection programs that did not exist under the county. It's one of the benefits of, uh, of our incorporation and it's just now starting to bear fruit. Thank you. I think we have time for one more quick question. Um, Ms. Nelder, would you address a question to Mr. Sander? Sure. Are there any policy areas in which you'd like to see Rancho Cordova cooperate more on a regional basis with neighboring city and county governments or even state and federal government? Or are there any areas you'd like to see Rancho become more autonomous? Oh, that's a very interesting question. We are by nature very collegial. You can probably tell from our, from our presentation here. You can tell from watching any one of our city council meetings. I would venture to say that we are probably the most engaged uh, city Council and city in the region on regional issues. Uh, several members of the City Council have led regional bodies, chaired regional bodies, and we have uh, participated in every opportunity that, that has ever been offered to us. And that can't be said of, of all the cities or even the county in, in Sacramento. So I think we are probably at the lead of the pack in terms of approaching uh, problems on a regional basis. That being said, you can always do more. Uh, there are areas in which you, you have to balance the, sort of the interests of your own constituents versus those in the region. Transit is one of those. Uh, are we better off having a locally funded transit system that focuses on getting people to those jobs? Or are we better off subsidizing transit somewhere else in the county? On that score, I would say we're better off on our own. We're better off getting the resources that we have because it's a regional benefit to, to provide better transit in Ranch Cordova. On other issues, uh, if you want to talk about homelessness, for example, that may not be the case. There are facilities and resources in, in downtown Sacramento that we don't have and can't match. Thank you very much. Mr. McGarvey? I think the uh, one thing about Ranch Cordova, like uh, uh, David was saying, is we have um, probably one of the most involved um, city councils. Um, I'm on the Air Quality Board, the Cable Commission, Mosquito Vector Control Board, uh, Restoration Advisory Board at Mather, 
an oversight committee at Mather Community Campus, uh, as well as being involved in um, many things there on the city council. It's something that we are uh, well aware of when we became a city, as well as being focused on our local issues. Not everything is local. You have to be able to reach out and be involved. Um, for instance, the uh, Mosquito and Vector Control Board is Yolo and Sacramento County. So we're going past the local area, you might say. And um, the National League of Cities, that's something you learn from other states, other cities there. You learn how you can do something in your local issue, and you can even give that to the people in the region. This is something that I found in Indianapolis. It goes a long way. Thank you. Mr. Cooley? I think w an area where I'd like to see us lead a little bit is on enhancing infill development. There's a fundamental economic challenge with economic development. It affects all development statewide. I think because of concerns with global warming, we're starting to see policymakers at the state level focus on it. And I think Rancho Cordova, 12 miles from the state capital with uh, the major job center we have is a good place to kind of try out some of the new tools to support infill. I think that would help us. Issues of cooperation are clearly uh, transportation. Mobility is life. If we can't sustain mobility across the region, it hurts all the jobs base, and that hurts everyone economically. And I think as an adjunct to that, to the extent that there's ways our city can support the region on needed flood control improvements, that's important. We have a lot of jobs in Rancho Cordova because our jobs are centered, they're in seismically stable county of Sacramento, but they're above the floodplain. And long-term vitality for our region, we have to deal with the perceived uh, natural disaster hazard of the region. Thank you. We're gonna have to move to closing statements. Mr. McGarvey, would you start? Well, again, thank you for this opportunity to uh, speak to you, to find out what the news media, what the uh, League of Women Voters is involved in and interested in, and it's just, uh, uh, a great opportunity, I think, for the people who aren't able to come to the city council meetings. Maybe they can watch TV and see us uh, saying something that they didn't really know we'd said before that, that we knew about. Um, we have many things in Ranch Cordova that people aren't really aware of. We are probably one of the most diverse communities and cities in the whole region. Um, we've got um, 73 languages spoken in Ranch Cordova, and it goes on and on. We had an international festival in May. We have our first sister city, Toyaba, Costa Rica. They signed the MOU with us July the 1st. And we've got um, St. John Vianney's Church is celebrating its 50th anniversary and it's celebrating international uh, services there. So it just goes on. We have many, many, many uh, show, ways to show how we have been part of the whole nation, and we're still there. Thank you. Mr. Cooley? Well, I just want to say, I guess as a long-term resident of Rancho Cordova with three decades with my wife, Sydney, obviously I'm looking to help our community move into the future in a way that is supportive of everyone who lives there. Um, I'm looking to give leadership on issues to try to bring our community values to home. Uh, I was the first really in the state or in the region to organize a foreclosure workshop way last December uh, because I saw that as a concern in my community. So that would sort of be the leadership side of me trying to see an issue affecting my community where I can make a difference. I've tried to do other things. This year I worked with middle school teachers to take 30 kids on a science camp to New Brighton State Beach where I basically ran a camping program for four days with our Mills Middle School. Um, I just. I'm honored to, to serve in the city council. I enjoy broad support from all the neighborhoods around our city. Uh, and I was surprised I was endorsed by Jack O'Connell, state school superintendent and the state treasurer. Along with educators in my community, I just look to continue to give leadership. Thank, thank you. you. Mr. Sander? Yes, thank you. And thanks again to the league for, uh, for hosting us today. Making Ranch Cordova better and safer will always be my top priority. During the time I was mayor, we created the Strong Neighborhoods Initiative that I talked about earlier today. It has helped clean up bad areas. It's required absentee landlords to clean up their rundown properties. It's reduced crime, and it will increase property values, leading to rejuvenation of Folsom Boulevard. These are the things I will continue to focus on in another term on the City Council. And I'm proud of some of the facts. Even in these tough economic times, we've always had balanced budgets in the City of Ranch Cordova. As a matter of fact, we've run surpluses. 
We have uh, some of the largest reserves for a city of our size in the region, probably in the state. We have over $80 million in total reserves, and we're only five years old. And we've done all this with no new taxes. With your help, I'll continue to work on behalf of all Ranch Cordovans to strengthen police protection, expand our park and recreation programs, find positive activities for our children. My name is David Sander, and I'm honored to be your city councilman, and I hope I can count on your vote. Thank you. I'd like to thank all of the candidates and the panelists for your participation today. And this forum has been designed to provide you, the voter, uh, provide information to you, the voter, in accordance with the League's belief that a democratic government depends on the informed and active partic participation of its citizens. We hope that you have gained insight from this forum that will help you make a decision on Election Day, Tuesday, November 4th. If you have not yet registered to vote, please note that the last day to register to vote for the November 4th election is October 20th. For more information for, on voter registration, candidates, and the statewide propositions, you can go to the League's Smart Voter Education website at www.smartvoter.org. I thank you for taking the time to learn more about the candidates for Rancho Cordova City Council and please remember to vote on Tuesday, November 4th, and help make our democracy work. Thank you.